One of the most intriguing and undervalued parts of the Harry Potter series is the Mirror of Erised. It shows the person looking into the mirror what they desire above all, hence the name, which is actually the word desire spelled backwards. It shows us nothing more or less than the deepest and most desperate desires of our hearts. The books only told us what three characters would see when looking in the mirror, and Rowling revealed three more after the series ended. But for me, I had to dig deeper and go past just those six characters. So I put together a list of 70 characters from the series, and I'm going to go over what each of them would see when looking in the mirror of Erised. Now just to be clear, most of these are my own theories, but I will be using my vast Potter knowledge having made over 120 videos on this channel, so I think they're going to be pretty good guesses. Depending on how I see fit, I'm going to choose when the character would look in the mirror. So it could be at different points in the series, whether it's around the first book, the seventh book, before the series started, after the series ended, and so on. Before we start, I want to share something really cool with you guys. I've recently teamed up with a company called Secret Lab, and they partnered with Warner Brothers to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the first Harry Potter film. They created the newly launched Secret Lab Harry Potter collection. The collection includes the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 Harry Potter edition, and the Secret Lab Memory Foam Lumbar Pillow Harry Potter edition. They sent me this incredible Hogwarts chair that they customized just for me based on my height and weight. It's honestly incredible. You can easily adjust the lumbar support with some knobs, the pillow for your head sticks on like a magnet, and the detail is outstanding. They have the Marauders map, even having the footprints and the classic Marauders line. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Since I myself am a Gryffindor, I got the Secret Lab Memory Foam Lumbar Pillow Harry Potter Gryffindor Edition. And the best part about this team up is you guys can get this chair as well, and one lucky winner will get it for free. All you have to do is head over to Instagram, follow my page and Secret Lab's page, both of which are linked down below, like my post about the giveaway, then tag two of your friends in the comments. And for the rest of you who don't win, don't worry, you can still get this chair. I linked down below the link to buy it. And you can customize your own Secret Lab Harry Potter Collection chair and memory foam lumbar pillow. It's a great opportunity, so don't miss out. I'm super excited to bring this forth to you guys. So now that that's out of the way, let's get the video started. Harry Potter. We'll start with the main character. He's obviously one of the six characters whose desire we know. He of course desired a family. Becoming an orphan at the age of one, this was something he never had. In the book, there was a whole line of ancestors that were looking back at him in the mirror, but in the film, he only saw his parents, James and Lily. Then later, he saw himself holding the Philosopher's Stone, but that was just in that moment. His true desire was having a family. Hermione Granger This is another one of the six characters whose desire we know, as Rowling revealed what Hermione would see after the series ended. The timeline in which Rowling gave this answer was the summer right before the Deathly Hallows took place, and JK said that she would see herself and her friends alive and unscathed, Voldemort defeated, and herself and Ron in a romantic embrace. Also, I'm going to add a small little theory of what else she would see. If she looked in the mirror at any given time besides that summer Rowling expanded on, I think it's very likely that she would see herself freeing house elves and having a leading role in the ministry. Ron Weasley and now we move on to another character whose desire has been confirmed in the series. Ron of course saw himself as Quidditch captain, head boy, and saw himself standing apart from his older brothers being better than all of them. That's me! Only I'm head boy, and I'm holding the Quidditch cup. And bloody hell, I'm Quidditch captain too! Ginny Weasley we never found out what Ginny would see, but I think it's pretty obvious. She desired Harry to notice her for most of the series. When they finally got together, she told him that she was always waiting for him, even when she was dating other guys. If she looked in the mirror, she would of course see herself and Harry together romantically. Draco Malfoy Draco desired power for most of the series, but when he finally got a chance to hold some power as a Death Eater, he did not want it anymore. So I'm going to go over two different moments in his life. Before he got the Dark Mark, I think he would have seen himself as a loyal and high-ranking Death Eater just like his father. But after becoming a Death Eater, I think he would see himself without the Dark Mark on his arm, showing that he had never joined Voldemort in the first place. Neville Longbottom When looking at Neville's story, you see that he is a bit of a tragic character. His parents were tortured into madness by Death Eaters when Neville was only a baby, meaning they lost their minds, forgetting and having no idea who their son was. When looking in the mirror, Neville would almost certainly see his parents with their minds intact and both of them there to raise him and watch him grow up. Luna Lovegood 
Luna was raised by her eccentric father Xenophilius, and he did a great job raising his kind-hearted and down-to-earth daughter. However, something was always missing in Luna's life, and that was a mother. She lost her mother Pandora when she was just 9 years old, and I think when looking in the mirror, Luna would see her mother standing there next to her. Sirius Black The best days of Sirius's life were his Hogwarts years. He was part of the Marauders, the group of boys that consisted of himself, James Potter, Remus Lupin, and Peter Pettigrew, and they ruled the school in the 1970s. Things became disastrous for the group shortly after finishing up at Hogwarts though, as Pettigrew betrayed them, which led to James's death. Sirius was framed for the murder of Peter Pettigrew and was sent off to Azkaban, and Lupin believed that Sirius was the one who betrayed James and killed Peter. So if Sirius looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself, James, and Lupin young and at Hogwarts again. Albus Dumbledore Dumbledore is another character whose desire we actually know. In The Crimes of Grindelwald, we saw a younger Dumbledore looking into the mirror, and he saw himself and Grindelwald making their blood pact, a moment he wished he could go back to as he was in love with Grindelwald and he loved that moment. Well, that was what he saw in the 1920s. Rowling later revealed what he would see in the 1990s, where the original series took place. She said he would see his family alive, whole, and happy, with his father Percival, who would have never gone to Azkaban, his mother Kendra, who would not have been killed, Ariana properly using magic and alive, and Aberforth reconciled to him. Severus Snape Snape dedicated his life to Lily Evans. He betrayed his master Lord Voldemort trying to save her, and when he wasn't able to, he spent years risking his life to protect Lily's son, all because he still loved her even 17 years after her death. I think it's pretty obvious what he would see. He would see himself romantically involved with Lily. Fred Weasley in the earlier books, I think Fred would see himself and his twin brother George running a very successful joke shop, as they have been working on this for many years. Ron told us that explosions would always be heard coming from the twins' room, dating back to before the first book even took place, and we would later find out that this was them experimenting with joke products. So it's clear that this was a desire of Fred for many years. George Weasley this is probably one of the most tragic ones on this list. George lost his other half in the Battle of Hogwarts, and he would never be the same. When looking in the mirror, George would see Fred back by his side, alive and well. The most tragic thing, though, is the fact that George did not need the mirror of Erised to be reminded of his fallen brother, because he's reminded of Fred every time he looks in a normal mirror. You okay, Freddy? Yeah. Me too. Percy Weasley Percy was very ambitious and had big aspirations. If he looked in the mirror any time before the Deathly Hallows, he would see himself as a very high-ranking ministry employee and maybe even as minister. But most of all though, he would see his family respecting him rather than making fun of him for his ambition. Molly Weasley I'm gonna go over three different parts of Molly's life. First, before she had kids, she would have seen her brothers Fabian and Gideon alive, as both of them lost their lives during the First Wizarding War. Then, around the time of the Order of the Phoenix and the Half-Blood Prince, she would have seen Percy and the rest of the family back together, as Percy had disowned the rest of the Weasleys, and Molly's other children hated their brother for this. Then, after the Deathly Hallows, though she had Percy back, she had of course lost Fred. So she would again see her family back together in the mirror, but instead of Percy returning this time, it would be Fred returning. Arthur Weasley Arthur was the breadwinner for the Weasley family, but he was never able to provide what he desired. He blamed himself for the family being poor, so I think he would have seen himself making more money, but at the same time, still doing what he loved, working with and for muggles. And like his wife, if he looked in the mirror after the Deathly Hallows, he would have seen Fred alive as well. Charlie Weasley Charlie would share the same desire as his mother and siblings, so when looking in the mirror, he would see Fred by his side. Bill Weasley The oldest of the Weasley clan was viciously mauled by Greyback and the Half-Blood Prince, an incident that left him with permanent and incurable scars on his face. They were so bad that they made him look unrecognizable afterwards. I think if he looked in the mirror, he would see his face back to normal. And of course, like all of the other Weasleys, if he looked in the mirror after the Deathly Hallows, he too would see Fred alive. Rubius Hagrid I think Hagrid would see a few things in the mirror. He would see himself as a fully-fledged wizard having never been expelled. He would see his deceased father next to him. And he would have a pet dragon that he could realistically tame and care for without any problems. Peter Pettigrew 
Pettigrew was a coward that surrounded himself with strong people to protect him. First the Marauders, and then Voldemort and the Death Eaters. I think Pettigrew was too cowardly to even dream of being strong himself. That would not even cross his insecure mind. I think he would instead see himself surrounded by the strongest group of people imaginable, all ready to protect and defend him. Fleur Delacour In the Goblet of Fire, we as an audience saw Fleur as stuck up, but as the series went on, we realized that this was not the case at all. She's actually incredibly selfless and down to earth. This was seen on full effect at the end of The Half-Blood Prince. Mrs. Weasley assumed that Fleur would break off her engagement with Bill after he was mauled, but Fleur said she wasn't going anywhere. Bill was the love of her life, and she was going to marry him no matter what. If she looked in the mirror, I think Fleur would see Bill without his scars. And not because she didn't want an ugly husband, but because she wanted Bill to be happy in his own skin. I think her own desires would come second to her husband's. Minerva McGonagall McGonagall lived a tragic life before the series started. There are so many sad moments to point out, but just going over the main thing, she lost her younger brother who was murdered by Death Eaters, and after falling in love, marrying, and moving in with the love of her life, Elphinstone Yercord, he was killed not long after that, breaking McGonagall's heart. I think Minerva would see Elphinstone in the life they would have had had he not died, as well as seeing her younger brother alive and standing next to her. Tom Riddle, aka Lord Voldemort this is another one of the six characters whose desire has been confirmed by Rowling. She said he would see himself more powerful than anyone in the world, he would be immortal, and there would be no Harry Potter there to stop him. Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Don't worry, I will be. Bellatrix Lestrange Bellatrix was a lunatic in love with a madman. If she looked in the mirror, she would see herself and Voldemort romantically involved. Voldemort would see her above everyone, both romantically and power-wise among Death Eaters. And she would bear him a child, which of course happened in The Cursed Child. But we don't speak of that garbage. The fact that a lunatic's unreachable desire is a canon point in the Harry Potter series is disgusting. It's disgusting. Remus Lupin Lupin struggled all his life with lycanthropy, the thing that makes you turn into a werewolf every full moon. Having lycanthropy made Lupin's life very hard, not only having to transform every month, which was incredibly painful and dangerous to those around him, but it also led to him being shunned by most of the wizarding world. If he looked in the mirror, he would see himself free of lycanthropy and free of being a werewolf. Nymphadora Tonks for Tonks, I'm going to base the timeline of this for during the Half-Blood Prince. During this time, she was incredibly depressed. She lost the light that normally shined through with her cheery personality, and her Patronus changed forms. The cause of all of this was the fact that she was in love with Lupin, but he refused to be with her. If Tonks looked in the mirror during this time, she would see herself and Lupin romantically together and happy. Cho Chang Cho was dating Cedric when he was killed, which made her very depressed. Then she was extremely confused, as she had developed feelings for Harry around the same time that she developed feelings for Cedric. But Cedric made the first move, so she chose him. Then, after Cedric's death, she pursued her feelings for Harry, but she was held back because she felt guilty, their first kiss even being highlighted by her crying. How was it? Wet. I mean, she was sort of crying. I think Hermione describes what Cho was feeling best, so I'll let her take this one. Obviously, she's feeling sad about Cedric and therefore confused about liking Harry and guilty about kissing him, conflicted because I'm just threatening to sack her mom from her job at the ministry and frightened of failing her OWLs because she's so busy worrying about everything else. If Cho looked in the mirror, I think she would see Cedric alive and she would see herself being able to freely choose between Cedric and Harry without any guilt. <laughs> Dudley Dursley if Dudley looked in the mirror, I think he would have seen himself reconciling with Harry earlier than he did. They of course left each other on good terms in the final book, but at that point, Dudley had been grateful to Harry for two years, as Harry had saved him from the Dementors in the fifth book. I think Dudley would realize that he and Harry could have been friends this whole time. He could have had a brother growing up, rather than a punching bag. <laughs> Vernon Dursley Vernon was a very greedy man who was obsessed with appearances, and had he looked in the mirror, I think he would have seen himself as rich, successful, and surrounded by material things like a fancy car, a mansion, and whatever else he could think of. Petunia Dursley Unlike her husband, deep down, Petunia was a good person. Her nastiness was brought on by jealousy of her sister Lily. Oh, my mother and father were so proud of the day she got her letter. We have... A witch in the family. Isn't it wonderful? 
I was the only one to see her for what she was. A freak. Looking at her childhood, she wrote to Dumbledore asking if she could come to Hogwarts as well. And when she was denied, Lily always reminded her of the school she so desperately wanted to go to, but never could. If Petunia looked in the mirror, she would have seen herself going to Hogwarts. Newt's Commander If Newt looked in the mirror, he would see himself in a world where all magical creatures were understood and respected. This of course came true later on in his life thanks to his best-selling book, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So I'm writing a book about magical creatures. Like an extermination guide? No, a guide to help people understand why we should protecting these creatures instead of killing them. Goldstein? Though I think he would have wanted the world to be even more understanding than it was during the original series. Oliver Wood Oliver was obsessed with Quidditch. It was his whole life. He eventually played professionally after his Hogwarts years, but he was only on the reserve team. If he looked in the mirror, he would have seen himself as the greatest and most successful Quidditch player to ever live. Gellert Grindelwald Grindelwald is a very complicated character. If he looked in the mirror when he was younger, or even during the events of the Fantastic Beast films, he would have seen himself as the master of death owning all three of the Deathly Hallows, and he would be the ruler of the world, making the Wizarding World rule over muggles. However, years later, it was stated that Grindelwald regretted his actions, and in his final act of redemption, he refused to give up the location of the Elder Wand, protecting both the world from Voldemort, and even more, the love of his life's tomb. If that Grindelwald looked in the mirror, he would see himself as a man who never became a tyrant and a man who never went after power, instead staying by Dumbledore's side romantically. Gilderoy Lockhart Pre-memory loss, Lockhart would have seen himself as the most famous wizard to ever live, not just for his books and stolen accomplishments, but for actual things he was able to do, which in the real world he could never do because he was a below-average wizard at best. Lita Lestrange Lita was burdened by guilt for almost her entire life. She switched her baby brother with another baby when he wouldn't stop crying, and when the ship they were on went down, she watched her real brother drown. She blamed herself and was haunted by the image of him sinking lower and lower. If Lita looked in the mirror, she would see her brother still alive, having never been switched and never been drowned. Lucius Malfoy We're gonna go over three different time periods for Lucius. First, if he looked in the mirror during the first Wizarding War, I think he would have seen himself as Voldemort's most trusted ally. And notice I said ally, not follower. If he had it his way, I think he would be more of an equal to the Dark Lord. Now, moving forward in the timeline, if Lucius looked in the mirror after Voldemort's downfall, he would have seen Voldemort back to full power, meaning he himself would be in a more powerful role. And finally, if Lucius looked in the mirror after Voldemort returned, most notably after he failed the Dark Lord in the Department of Mysteries, he would have seen Voldemort gone and his family safe. Narcissa Malfoy If Narcissa looked in the mirror after Voldemort's return, and most notably after he gave her son Draco the impossible task of killing Albus Dumbledore, like her husband Lucius, she would see her family safe and Voldemort gone. Lily Potter Lily always loved her sister Petunia, even after their falling out. She desperately tried to reconnect with her older sister, but it always failed. Even in adulthood, Lily tried again and again, and every time, she would end up in tears. Because of this, if Lily looked in the mirror, she would see herself and Petunia as best friends again. James Potter During his Hogwarts years, James was plain and simple, a bully. However, when he realized that his ego, his cockiness, and most of all his bullying ways made the love of his life dislike him, he changed everything about himself, maturing a great deal. Doing this made Lily fall for him, but this did not happen until his seventh and final year at Hogwarts. If he looked in the mirror, I think he would have seen a man who stopped bullying much earlier than he did, not only to get the girl, but because he realized how his bullying affected others. Alistair Mad-Eye Moody Moody dedicated his life to hunting down dark wizards, and he became perhaps the best Auror of all time. However, this took a real toll on him, both physically and mentally. Every inch of his skin, especially his face, seemed to be scarred. He also lost one of his legs, and of course, one of his eyes. On top of that, he had severe PTSD from his time as an Auror, and he was paranoid 24-7, which dominated and ruled his life. If he looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself free of PTSD, and physically, he would have both legs, both eyes, and no scars on his body. However, with that being said, I don't think he would undo anything he did in his career. I think he would still see himself as an Auror, just unscarred and damage-free from doing his job. Mundungus Fletcher 
Mundungus was a thief and a con man, and if he looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself surrounded by riches, most of which he probably stole and conned out of people because that was what he loved doing. Tina Goldstein if Tina looked in the mirror before the Fantastic Beast films took place, she would see herself being reinstated as an Auror, a position that she loved and a position that she had lost when she used magic in front of a nomad. However, after meeting Nude, I think she would see herself romantically involved with him, and on top of that, she would see them being together in a world where the global wizarding war was over. Kingsley Shacklebolt Kingsley was a man dedicated to helping the world, first as an Auror, then a member of the Order of the Phoenix, and finally as the Minister of Magic following the events of the Deathly Hallows. If he looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself in the best position possible to help make the world a better place. Argus Filch Argus Filch was a squib, meaning a person born from magical parents but having no magical ability themselves. He hated Hogwarts students because he was jealous that they got to become witches and wizards when he was unable to do so. If he looked in the mirror, he would see himself possessing magical abilities. Dolores Umbridge If Umbridge looked in the mirror, she would see herself born into a well-respected pureblood family. And let me explain. Dolores was very embarrassed of her real family, as she despised her wizard father for his lack of ambition, merely being a janitor in the Ministry of Magic. She despised her muggle mother for being a muggle and making her herself a half-blood, and she despised her brother who was a squib. Umbridge disowned her family, never speaking to them again, and she went on to tell people that she was a pureblood even though this wasn't true. In the Deathly Hallows, she told people that the S on Slytherin's locket stood for Selwyn, a pureblood family known for being dark wizards, and she began to tell people that she was a descendant of the Selwyns. So clearly, she desired to be part of a well-respected pureblood family more than anything else. Jacob Kowalski Jacob's life changed forever when becoming friends with witches and wizards, and he was heartbroken to have to give up those memories at the end of the first Fantastic Beast movie. However, luckily for him, his memories stayed intact. You were supposed to have been obliviated. <laughs> it didn't work, pal. But you said it. The potion only erases bad memories. I didn't have any. However, though his memories were intact, Jacob was still an outsider looking in as a nomad. I ain't a wizard. I'm just me. If he looked in the mirror, he would see himself as a wizard part of the wizarding world. Lavender Brown I'm going to look at what Lavender would see during the events of the Half-Blood Prince. If she looked in the mirror at the beginning of the book, she would see herself and Ron together romantically as she had a major crush on him. But if she looked at the mirror at the back half of the book, she would see herself with Ron who she had never broken up with, and she would see Ron choosing her over Hermione who she was always threatened by. Pravati Patil Pravati was best friends with Lavender, and during the events of the Deathly Hallows, Pravati's best friend died in the Battle of Hogwarts. If Pravati looked in the mirror, she would have her best friend back by her side. Sybil Trelawney Sybil was a descendant of Cassandra Trelawney, one of the most famous, successful, and well-respected seers in history. Sybil was constantly overshadowed by her great-great-grandmother, everybody making comparisons that she could not live up to. Though Sybil was a true seer, no one took her seriously, and even more, no one respected her. If she looked in the mirror, she would see herself as well-respected and revered as her great-great-grandmother Cassandra. Winky during Winky's time serving the Crouch family, Barty Sr. sent his son Barty Jr. to Azkaban. However, when a sick and dying Mrs. Crouch begged her husband to free their son, Barty Sr. arranged for Mrs. Crouch and their son to switch places. Mrs. Crouch stayed in Azkaban, where she eventually died, and Barty Jr. came home. Winky was forced to watch over him, and it was her job to keep him a secret. After many years, Winky took Barty Jr. to the Quidditch World Cup. While there, he escaped and cast a dark mark in the sky, which Winky was blamed for, making her lose her job. Winky was devastated and was never the same again. Eventually, Barty Jr. killed his father and he himself got the Dementor's kiss, meaning Winky lost all three members of the family. If Winky looked in the mirror, she would see the Crouch family together again, both alive and in the right minds, and Winky would be beside the family working for them again. Creature Creature worked for and adored the Black family, especially their youngest son named Regulus. When Regulus got older, he joined Voldemort and became a Death Eater. However, he soon backed out and he had Creature help him get Voldemort's Horcrux. When they were in the cave, Regulus was pulled down by Inferi and his last order for Creature was to destroy the locket, which the house elf was never able to do. If Creature looked in the mirror, he would see Regulus by his side still alive, and he would see himself holding the locket, which he had been able to destroy. Barty Crouch Sr. 
As I mentioned before, Crouch Sr. helped his sick and dying wife switch places with their son in Azkaban so he could come home. And the only reason Crouch Sr. did this was because he loved his wife more than anything else. If Crouch Sr. looked in the mirror, he would see his wife next to him very much alive and very much in love with him, which was not the case at the time of her death, due in large part to him sending their son to Azkaban. Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Jr. was a madman. He was arguably the most loyal follower Voldemort ever had. Though, Bellatrix might have something to say about that. And if he looked in the mirror, he would see himself by Voldemort's side as his number two as the Dark Lord took over the Wizarding World. Cedric Diggory Though he didn't show it, as he was a very humble and modest guy, he was of course angry that Harry was the second Hogwarts champion. Especially when he wasn't even mentioned in the article about the champions, Harry getting all of the attention for both Hogwarts and Gryffindor. I think Cedric wanted to give Hufflepuff their moment in the sun, which rarely happened for that house. And if he looked in the mirror, he would have seen himself winning the tournament, giving both his house and school that glory. Amos Diggory Amos was the opposite of his son, being braggy, arrogant, and cocky, especially when talking about Cedric. But despite that, he was so proud of his son. Cedric was literally everything to him. Seeing him cry by Cedric's dead body is one of the most gut-wrenching moments in the entire series. That's my son! That's my boy! My boy! If Amos looked in the mirror, he would see Cedric standing next to him, alive and well. Queenie Goldstein Queenie developed a romantic relationship with the nomad Jacob Kowalski, but Jacob soon came to his senses and said that they could not be together, saying she would be punished for even talking to a nomad like him. Queenie was heartbroken, so much so that she lost her good senses, putting Jacob under a love potion. Why is it wrong to want to marry you? Okay. To want to have a family? We talked about this like a million times. If we get married and they find out, they're going to throw you in jail, sweetheart. I can't have that. If she looked in the mirror during this time, I think she would see herself and Jacob together, and Jacob would not be forced into it. Rita Skeeter If Rita looked in the mirror, she would see herself as the most successful journalist and writer in the world, the thing she dedicated her life to, and she would be surrounded by many prizes and awards for her work. Dean Thomas during the events of the Deathly Hallows, Dean had to go on the run, deciding not to go back to Hogwarts, as the Ministry was hunting down Muggleborns, which Dean thought he was. Though, fun fact, he's actually a half-blood. His father was a wizard, but never told Dean's mother this before he left. But because Dean believed he was a Muggleborn, if he looked in the mirror at that point in time, I think he would see himself as a half-blood or a pure-blood so he wouldn't have to run away. Which is ironic, because his desire, which should not be able to come true, was actually true all all along. Seamus Finnegan We're gonna take a look at Seamus during the events of the Order of the Phoenix. When Harry claimed that Voldemort was back, Seamus called him a liar on multiple occasions. Later on in the year though, he discovered that Harry was actually right and he apologized. I want to apologize. I think if Seamus looked in the mirror at that very moment, he would see himself believing Harry from the beginning. If he had, he would have been part of Dumbledore's army much sooner. But instead, his first DA lesson was the one that got busted, so he missed out on learning a lot from Harry. Horace Slughorn Slughorn made a huge mistake by helping Voldemort understand how Horcruxes worked. Please, don't think badly of me when you see it. You have no idea what he was like even then. If Slughorn looked in the mirror, he would see himself never telling Voldemort anything about Horcruxes. I don't know anything about such things, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Victor Crumb Crumb was a star Quidditch player, perhaps the best to ever do it. However, in his career, he lost in the Quidditch Cup twice. After the second loss, he tearfully announced his retirement having never won a championship. For 12 years, in the back of his head, he always knew he never won at all. And if Crumb looked in the mirror during those 12 years, he would see himself finally winning a championship. Funnily enough, after 12 years, that desire would come true, as he went back in the league and won it all, sealing the game with an amazing golden snitch grab to win the game. Andromeda Tonks In the span of a few months, Andromeda lost her loving husband Ted and her daughter and son-in-law Nymphadora and Remus, and she was left to raise their infant son Teddy Lupin. If Andromeda looked in the mirror, she would see her husband alive and back by her side, along with Nymphadora and Remus holding Teddy, both of whom were alive and able to raise their son the proper way. Olymp Maxime 
Maxime is a very insecure half-giant. She hates the fact that she's a half-breed, and she even denies it when asked. When Hagrid brought it up to her, she yelled at him, said she wasn't a half-giant like him, and stormed off. If Maxime looked in the mirror, she would see herself as human with no giant DNA. Fenrir Greyback the werewolf Greyback's ambition in life was to bite as many people as possible and recruit them, eventually building an army of werewolves big enough to take over the entire wizarding world with himself as leader. This was of course an unrealistic goal in the real world, but when Greyback looked in the mirror, this dream would be what he would see, himself and werewolves ruling and running the world. Cornelius Fudge Cornelius Fudge is an idiot and a terrible leader. He's petty, power hungry, and insecure. We saw this in the Order of the Phoenix when he tried to discredit Dumbledore, the man he knew most of the public preferred over him. If Fudge looked in the mirror, he would see himself as the most esteemed and well-respected minister of magic to ever live, and he would see himself surpassing even the greatness of Albus Dumbledore. Quirinus Quirrell this is the final character whose desire was confirmed in the series. In the first book, we saw that he desired the Philosopher's Stone more than anything, as it would help bring Voldemort back to life and get the Dark Lord off the back of his head. I see what I desire. I see myself holding the stone. However, outside that one moment, like a lot of others loyal to Voldemort, on another day, I think he would see himself garnering power and respect. And that's of course the reason he allowed Voldemort to go on the back of his head, as a means to gain that power and respect he desired so much. Phileas Flitwick Flitwick is half goblin, half human, and this can lead to a lot of discrimination. We've seen it with werewolves, giants, centaurs, and so many others in the wizarding world. Filthy half-breed! If you're a half-breed, you're going to live a harder life than those that are fully human. Though we didn't see too much of this discrimination for Flitwick, there were glimpses of it. If he looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself as fully human. Dobby Harry was the person Dobby cared about above all others. Harry Potter free Dobby. How can Dobby ever repay him? I don't think Dobby would change much in his life, as he mostly helped Harry. But if he looked in the mirror, I think he would see himself not trying to hurt Harry during the events of the Chamber of Secrets. He wouldn't make Harry think his friends weren't writing to him. He wouldn't have closed the pathway to Platform 9 and 3 quarters. And he wouldn't have sent the bludger after Harry that broke his arm. I think he would have seen himself finding another way to protect Harry from the larger threat in a way that didn't hurt Harry physically or emotionally. Never try to save my life again. The Bloody Baron the Bloody Baron is a ghost covered in blood and wrapped in chains at all times. And there's a very good reason for this. He was in love with Helena Ravenclaw, but Helena did not feel the same way. When Rowena, Helena's mother, was on her deathbed, she told the Baron to find Helena so she could say goodbye. But when the Baron found her, Helena refused to come with him, and in his rage, he killed her. In his ghost form, he forever bore the stains of Helena's blood, and he himself put chains around him as punishment for what he did. Now, I'm not sure if ghosts can see into the mirror of Erised, or even a mirror for that matter, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna say that they can. If the Baron looked in the mirror, he would see himself as a man that never killed the woman he loved, but instead, in a romantic relationship with her. Helena Ravenclaw, aka the Grey Lady. Helena stole the Ravenclaw diadem from her mother, and right before she was killed by the Baron, she hid the diadem in the woods. She never told anyone where it was, and it became the Lost Diadem. That is, until she met a young man named Tom Riddle. He charmed her, getting her to tell him where she hid it. And this was something she always regretted, as he of course turned it into a horcrux. He defiled it with dark magic! If Helena looked in the mirror, again assuming that the mirror would work for ghosts, she would see herself never having told Voldemort where the diadem was. And finally, Teddy Lupin. Teddy, like Harry, lost his parents when he was a baby. He's sort of the character that makes the story come full circle, as he is the second Harry, an orphan whose parents died fighting for the greater good when he was just a baby. So it seems only fitting that he would see the same thing that Harry saw, his dead parents standing behind him. And there you have it, 70 characters and what they would see in the mirror of Erised. Let me know in the comments below what you think of my theories, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Thank you so much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can follow me on Instagram to see more of my personal life like my cute dog Loki and some behind the scenes movie flame stuff. I also do similar content on TikTok and Twitter that I do here on this channel, so if you like what I do here, check them out. All the handles are right below me and links are in the description. Over here are my wonderful patrons. If you want to be featured on the next video plus get a few other perks, become a patron today. As always, if you liked the video, hit that like button and subscribe and look out for more great movie flame videos on the way.